Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how we're going to make these little um, envelope journals that we'll be putting together and they come with built-in pockets and we'll be adding uh, pages and decorating and all of that good stuff. And I'm also going to be showing you how to do two different ones. Um, the larger and the smaller one. So the smaller envelopes are four by six inches and the larger ones are five by seven. And I will have a link for those down in the description box if you are interested in using these exact envelopes. Otherwise you could use any envelopes that you have on hand and it will work the exact same way. Now for decorating, I am going to be using these old ledger pages as well as these lined pages printed front and back. And then I'm also going to be using our shabby travel kit and some letters from our um, letters and postcards journal kit, which I will also link all of those kits down below if you are interested in those. Otherwise you can use any kits that you have on hand. All right, so for putting this together, it's real simple. You just take two envelopes and overlap them like so, and then they just open and close like this. It's really, really simple. So that's gonna be kind of the base for how we um, create our journal today. And I'm gonna start with the two smaller journals, the four by six ones, as well as my um, old ledger journal pages. Uh, I have these laying on the table and I was thinking, what can I do with these? So I'm gonna use these in this project today. And to start, I'm just going to lay them over my envelope like this and cut them down to fit. So I'm just going to sort of trace around the envelope, making sure that I line it up with the folded edge, not the uh, like non-folded edge because I don't want all of my pages to fall apart. And then just tracing that and cutting it out. And you could do these in sections if you want. I just went ahead and muscled my way through the entire stack and I just kept trimming it down to fit until everything was perfect. Just like this, and your journal should be able to fold easily like so. All right, so now we can go ahead and distress these pages a little bit because right now they have like this perfect cut edge and it looks a little unfinished to me. So I'm gonna be going in with this uh, Tim Holtz distressor that I have. Um, I think again, we will have this link down below and it just has these little blades inside of the tool and you can use that to scratch up your edges and make them look a little less perfect here. And the more you distress it, the more obvious this will become, just like so. And then I'm gonna be going in with some distress ink here in the color Vintage Photo, and just going along all of my pages, all of the edges, the creases, everything like that. And when it's done, it should look something like this, and I think it just helps it look a little bit more finished. All right, so now we can go ahead and start assembling things. So I'm gonna begin by assembling the journal itself. So for this, I'm just gonna be taking a little bit of Fabri-Tac and adding glue to this edge of my envelope, the little folding edge, and just gluing the second envelope right on top of it like this and pressing it down. And once that's dry, we can go ahead and sew our pages in. So I'm gonna line up the crease of my pages with the crease of the envelope. And I do have a book binding kit here. I will have this linked down below. We have a link to all of our supplies that you can go find. It will take you to our blog and you can find all of the um, supplies that we use. And this kit comes with some waxed thread and all, as well as needles. So I'm just gonna be taking one of those needles and the all and a little bit of wax thread in a color that I liked. Again, you could use any thread you have, any needle you have, you don't have to use this kit. It just makes it a little simpler. And I'm going one, two, three times the length of my journal and that gives me enough thread for sewing. We're gonna be doing a pamphlet stitch. And once I've lined my pages up, I'm just going to open it to the center now that they are centered in my journal, not too tall, not too short, you know, not sticking out of the journal awkwardly. And then using some bulldog clips, I'm just gonna hold that in place so it doesn't move around. And using my awl, I'm gonna poke a hole right through the center, like roughly in the middle of my journal, right through the back, 
uh, out the spine, like right here on the crease. And then I'm going to create another hole near the top, maybe slightly in from that, about an inch maybe, quarter inch, anywhere in there. And I'm just going to poke a second hole again right through the spine. Mine was slightly off here. It's not a terrible thing if you're just a little off, but try to get it right on that spine. That'll make sure that all your pages are nice and straight. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the bottom, just about an inch to a quarter inch anywhere in there, um, up from the bottom of the journal and out through the spine. All right, just like that. Now we can take our thread and our needle and I'm going to thread it through so that there's one smaller tail and one longer tail, just like this. And we're going to go through this center hole here first and out through the back because I want my knot to be on the inside hidden. For other journals, I usually start from the back, but for this one, we're going to start from the inside. And then we're going to go up through this hole here at the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter either way. And we're going to pull that through. And when you do this, you'll want to leave a tail through that first middle hole right here. You want to leave this piece and don't pull that through because we're going to use it later to tie it off. Now going through the remaining hole that we have left and then back through the center, just like this and pulling that through and removing our needle. And that is a pamphlet stitch. And we're going to take both these tails and pull them tight to make sure that our pages are secured tightly to our journal, just like this. And then we're going to tie this off. And when you do this, you want to make sure that that center string is in the middle of both of those ties so that you can tie your knot over the top of it and it won't pull through the journal. All right, real important to remember that step. And then just go ahead and tie it a couple times, making sure you have a good knot there. And then we're going to cut those strings down, leaving just a little bit behind like this. And then we can remove our clips and there you go. Your pages are now sewn into your envelope journal. And I want to make sure that mine are nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and take a candle and just roll it out. Not the most graceful way to do this, but it does get the job done. So now that that is nice and creased and everything fits real well, we're ready to continue on with the rest of our tutorial. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with our larger envelope now, which is the five by seven one. And it's the exact same process, only this time instead of ledger pages, I'm using these lined pages. Again, I printed them out front and back. And I'm going to be just doing the exact same process of like trimming them down to fit and sewing them in and all of that. So again, gone ahead, distressed the edges, added some distress ink here. And I think I'm using like six to eight papers, something like that. Not too, not too many papers. So it's not too thick. And then I am going to go ahead and glue my envelopes together. And then adding those pages. Now, if you wanted to, you could sew your smaller uh, envelope journal inside of the larger one if you wanted to. So if you were going to do that, now would be the time. Um, and you could also sew this whole thing into a larger journal. That's an option as well. So it can be like an additive to a journal or it can stand alone. You can also add your smaller journal like into the pocket of this larger envelope like this. If you wanted to do some layering and something like that, just, you know, get creative with it. But for mine, I'm going to go ahead and keep these separate today and de uh, decorate them separately just so we can kind of keep things simple here. So I'm going to set the smaller one aside for now and sew the pages into the larger journal. And it's going to be the same process. Again, I'm using the pamphlet stitch to sew it in. You could tie it in using a tie in method if you wanted to instead. That's entirely up to you. I just like the way that the sew in looks. All right, so now that that is done, it should look something like this, very similar to our smaller journal, just a slightly larger size. So you could use this in a larger or a smaller journal. 
Now for decorating, I'm going to be using one kit, which is the Shabby Travel Journal Kit. So I've taken some of the pretty papers from that and picked one that I like. And we're going to start by decorating the little foldable flap of the envelope. So I'm just going to trace my envelope onto that piece of paper like this, and I'm going to cut it out. Now something to remember is that if you cut it out upside down and your envelope's not perfect, the orientation may be a little weird, so just keep that in mind. And I'm going to slide my little piece that I cut out back so that I get this like border to it so that we don't lose it in the rest of the artwork. I kind of want it to have that definition. So I'm going to cut this down just a little bit so I have that border. So cut these envelope uh, ends off. And then I'm going to glue it down again using Fabri-Tac, which is non-water based so it doesn't wrinkle. And then this little piece that is still sticking uh, over the edge here, I'm just going to trim that off very carefully so I don't cut the envelope. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Now using the rest of the paper here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort of eyeball a panel that I want to cut out to fit again a little bit smaller than the envelope so I have that border just like this. And then I'm going to be taking this page from the larger card that comes in the kit and I'm just going to cut that card in half and take this uh, little panel from it and round off the corners and add a little bit of that distress ink again. Doing the same thing to this back panel here. And then um, I ended up deciding to use this on the inside instead of the front cover. So just going to save that for later and instead on the cover I'm going to use this pocket. So adding a little bit of glue to the side and the bottom of the pocket, leaving the shorter side um, without glue and adding the glue instead to this panel because it's a little bit too large for the panel. So I'm going to need to cut that off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, remove the extra here and then round off those corners again so it looks finished. All right, and then just adding glue to the back of that panel and gluing it down to our envelope. And then to fill up the envelope, I've got this um, ribbon here that I'm going to be adding to one of the cards from the kit. So I've already gone ahead and added an eyelet and I'm just going to make a little bow here for this little piece. And then I've also got this card that comes with the kit and I'm going to round off the edges and add a little bit of distress ink. And to finish off this ephemera piece, I'm just going to add one of our page tabs to it. Just tuck it in the pocket like so. And there we go. Now for decorating the pocket, I'm going to use this Merchant 41 lace that I have. It's like this little lacy ribbon. And I'm just going to add a couple of strips to the top and bottom of the pocket like this. Using a bone folder here to sort of press it down. And then I've also got these wax seal stickers. I will have these linked down below as well. And I'm just going to be choosing one of these that I want to add to the um, flap of my envelope here. So these are real simple. They just peel and stick like this. And it comes with multiples of the same ones. So I'm going to grab a matching one and use it on the inside to sort of hide that white and just make it look a little more decorative. So lining them up and pinching them together just like this. And it should look something like that. Quick and easy way to add a little wax seal there. And now moving to the inside, I'm going to take that panel that we made earlier and add a small hole to the top using a micro hole punch as well as a brad. And this is just for decoration. You could secure it to the page this way so the panel like swings, but I'm just going to keep life simple today and glue it straight down to the page. Again, using that fabric tack and just pressing it down like this. And then I'm going to choose some ephemera from the kit that I like as well as using some of these pages from our um, uh, letters and postcards journal kit. Although you could also use the new scripts and scraps papers if you wanted to just to add like a little bit of um, personal letter touch to the journal. And then I'm taking this scrap that we used in the cover. You can see where we cut out that flap and I'm going to be using that to decorate the inside here. I just thought it looked kind of pretty and it fit. So I'm just going to mark off the edges of my envelope using my fingernail to crease the paper. You can measure if you'd like. I just prefer this way. It's a bit easier for me. And I'm going to sort of slide it down until I get that border right where that edge of the envelope is. 
And then I'm going to trim it down even more again so I get that full border around it. And then rounding off these corners here, that corner rounding punch. Again, we have this linked in our description box if you'd like to use that. And then adding some glue and gluing it down. Just like so. And then I'm going to go in and add another one of those stickers, those wax seal stickers. And I had this scrap left over, so I wanted to try to use all the scraps just because this paper was so pretty. So I'm going to be adding that as well as some of the lace that we used on the cover uh, to this little envelope flap on the inside here. And I'm just cutting these corner edges off so that they sort of follow the line of the envelope flap. That makes sense. And just gluing those down and once that's done we can fill the back pocket with ephemera. You can use anything you'd like to fill that pocket. And then adding a little bit more of that lace to the back inside cover here as well as just adding a little scrap to this bottom back page. All right, there you go. That is this journal decorated. I think it turned out nice and pretty. All right, so if you want to, you could decorate the back or you can leave it blank. I'm leaving mine for today. And I'm going to be showing you how you could potentially close your journal. So I'm taking some of this twine that I have and I'm going to be poking it uh, with the needle right through the center hole that we made in this journal. And I'm going to be pulling one end of that string through while leaving the other uh, sort of sticking out in the center of our journal. You can kind of see what I mean here in a second just like this. So you should have it running right through the center of your journal. And then I'm going to wrap this string like underneath one of our stitch stitches that we made and tie it in a knot. And that string is going to hold our twine in place so that it doesn't pull through. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that knot tight here. A little bit of finagle in here, just like that. And we're gonna do that same thing once more to make sure that our knot really holds. And once you have a knot that you are happy with and you feel like it's gonna hold, I'm gonna cut off the extra of the inside twine right here, just like that. And now we have a string that is sticking out. And you could do the same thing again and have two strings from the back. I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to poke it through the crease of the envelope, um, the foldable flap here. So I'm going right through the center, just kind of eyeballing it and going through the crease here. And again, pulling that string through just like this. And you could tie it off here in a knot and have just one string. I wanted to have two because I kind of liked the like unevenness of string. So I'm going to poke a second hole underneath that first one and just thread the uh, string through it. One end just like this. And now I've got two ends sticking out just like so. And I'm going to use all three of these to tie a bow, just kind of a messy uneven bow. And you can do this however you want. You don't have to do it this way. I was kind of just experimenting and playing around and I liked the way that this looked. So just showing you what I did here. Just make a little bow, cut off any extra that seems like it's too much. And there you go. The larger envelope is done. All right, so now we can go ahead and start decorating the smaller envelope similar process. I chose one of the papers from the kit that I liked. I'm kind of going more with blues on this one since I went with pinks on the other. And again, I just traced out this flap here and I'm going to glue it down and cut off the extra, leaving that border there. And then I have this decorative punch that I'm going to use to punch the edge of this paper here that comes from the kit. And I'm going to be using that to decorate the edge of the envelope flap like this. I did use just a little bit of distress ink here. And now I'm going to do the same thing where I cut out a little panel from that same paper 
and go around the edge with some distress ink just like this and then I'm going to choose something to go on the front cover. I ended up using one half of this um, little card that comes with the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But first I'm going to add some hardware to this. So I have these hardware corners that I just hammer down. If you don't have the real hardware or you don't want to mess around with it, we do have um, a printable in our shop of faux hardware that you can just cut out and glue down and it has the exact same look. So if you want that, I will have that linked down below as well. All right, so once I've added my corners, um, I can go ahead and work on this little panel that'll go on top of everything. So just rounding those corners, adding some distress ink to make it look finished, as well as adding one of those page tabs to the top, just like this. And I did decide to go ahead and add a brad to this as well, just to make it a little more decorative. And now we can go ahead and glue both of our panels down to the envelope. Just like this. And this looked a little bit blank to me, so I decided to go ahead and add a paper clip to it, as well as a um, silk bow that I have or is it satin I can't ever remember but um, we do have a link for this so I will make sure to include that down below if you are interested and that is what the front cover ends up looking like so now we can go ahead and start decorating the inside so taking that striped paper the same one we used on the cover I am going to be sort of feeling where this like pockets crease is and just creasing that with my finger just following along the edges and maybe there's an easier way to do this, but I don't know it. So this is what I did. And we're gonna save that piece that we cut out here, but it should be pretty close to the pocket that you have. And I'm just going to sort of trace a border on the inside of that uh, cut that we made. And I'm gonna cut that off and save that as well. And we're actually gonna be using that piece. So gluing that right along the edge here, like so. And then this larger piece, just moving it down a little bit. And then I'm going to crease along the edges of the envelope again. And just cut that down and trim it to fit, leaving a slight border here. Adding some glue and gluing it down just like that. Nice and decorative. Again, I'm just kind of making this up as I go here. so. Next, I'm going to be taking this decorative punch again and same thing, punching that same paper that we used on the cover. And I'm just gonna be adding this to the edge here, adding a little bit of glue and gluing it down like so. And then I also decided to go in with a little bit of that lace that we used on our first envelope. Just add it right here. And then taking that panel that we cut earlier, um, I'm going to be sliding it in underneath this paper clip because it's kind of glued down. Whoops. And I'm going to just glue the little panel to the envelope flap. And because it looks a little unfinished with that edge cut, I'm just going to be creating a new one from that same decorative paper, just by kind of tracing it around the tip of the envelope flap. And then I decided to use that same decorative punch to punch the flat edge of that little piece and just gluing it down like so. Now taking this ribbon, I'm just going to again be adding a decorative border using this same striped paper and that decorative punch and then adding the ribbon on top of it. And I kind of messed up the punch a little bit, but that's okay. Imperfections are a nice personal touch. <laughs> All right, so now that that is done, I can go ahead and add some pieces to this pocket here, as well as decorate this front page. So again, I'm just choosing the other half of that card um, that we used on the front cover, rounding off the corners, and then adding some brads to each of the corners as well. And I'm just going to glue this straight down onto that front page like so. 
And then I'm just taking some of those letters from the postcards and envelopes kit, folding them up and tucking them in the pocket with some ephemera pieces, just like that. And then to finish some decorating, I just added a paper clip to the back page and tucked a couple of these little cards inside of it like this. And then to close this one up, I'm just taking the last of some of this like stripey uh, string that I have. And I'm gonna be doing like a little package tie here. So just wrapping it around the front and then from the back sort of doing this like twist motion with these two ends. And then I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and tie it off in a little bow. And my bow is really small because I didn't have much string left. So if you use a little bit more string, your bow might look a little bit nicer, but that should finish up the smaller uh, envelope journal. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a flip through so you can kind of see what it looks like once it's all put together. Untie the string here sort of show off this little envelope. Again, this could be like a cute addition to a current journal or they can kind of stand on their own. You could maybe make these like personalized, like a birthday card or something, a card to give to someone, a little bit of journaling. You could add more pages if you want to write more in it, or you could decorate this inside page. It's up to you. Also, I just want to give a shout out to my mom because she designed all of these kits and I think that the shabby travel kit is like one of my favorite kits. I just think it looks so pretty and she's just been doing great lately and I just want to shout out that her kits are beautiful and I love working with them. <laughs> And then we have the larger one that's done more in pinks with the twine closure here. Lots of pretty papers and pretty little cards. Again, you could decorate these a little bit more, add stuff to the front or back. I wanted to keep things kind of simple today. It doesn't take much to make it look really decorative and pretty. So it's kind of like a fun, simple project you could do in a single afternoon if you wanted. Lots of lined papers for writing out all of your thoughts. You could take this like with the travel kit with you on like vacation or something and keep all of your memories in here, a journal of what's happening. That could be really pretty as well. All right, so that is going to finish today's tutorial. I hope you guys got inspired and we'll create some of these on your own and I can't wait to see them. All right, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.